welcome everyone. And before uh, we get started, I would like to take a moment to recognize we are on the ancestral and unceded homelands of the Honkaminum and Skohomish speaking people, and to extend our appreciation for the opportunity to hold a meeting on this territory. And if you're not joining us from Barnaby, I encourage you to reflect on the ancestral and unceded territories you are joining us from. And uh, welcome again to another Stride event. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, today's, uh, it's officially the closing of the four sessions nature photography workshop that, uh, that Rebecca Hale uh, hosted for the community. And uh, we're gonna be able to enjoy some of the images that uh, that the participants were able to produce during this time that they spent together during these four sessions. So we're very excited about that. And, uh, and later on, as I mentioned, we're gonna be doing just our final remarks for the festival. And I hope you stick around for that. We're gonna be thanking everybody that was involved uh, in making these two weeks happen. And then later on at eight o'clock, I hope you join the stream of our last event the concert by the band Living Like Larry, and that's going to be streamed on YouTube. You have you the way to get there is to go to our website. We are Burnaby. Just click on the event, and that will take you. Uh, click on the link, and that will take you to the YouTube stream. And that's at eight o'clock. So thank you again for for joining. And I'm gonna go ahead and pass it to Rebecca. Great. Hi everybody. I just wanna before we get started thank. Um, the Neighborhood House, uh, the Stride organizers, and also all of you for coming today, and also the participants that were in the, the nature workshop. Um, I, um, I was thinking of the quote from the movie Field of Dreams, if you build it, they will come. And somehow uh, that seemed to resonate, it's a 1989 film, so I'm dating myself here. But um, you know, you guys built Stride and they came. And it was uh, also the way that the workshop worked is that there were four sessions and people kept coming back and they even had homework. So, and they came back with their homework. Their dog didn't eat their homework. But um, so, so that was really great because then it becomes a dialogue and it becomes something that can uh, be more than photography. You know, it's a way to build community. So anyway, I think it was a great success. And I just wanted to um, I put together kind of a, a slideshow presentation and I'll probably be pointing out a few things along the way. It's not a critique, it's not a, you know, it's not the way the classes went, but maybe just to, to go a little bit into some of the things we were covering in the class, maybe to give you like a little taste of it. Um, because maybe someday we'll do it again, who knows? <laughs> um, anyway, um, so, I will just bring that up on my screen and then. Um, hmm. Let's see, I think it should work. You guys seeing something? That's good. It's good news. Okay, so basically this went for 10 days. That's it. <laughs> or, you know, from the 17th to the 27th. We met four times, as we said. Uh, the first time we were kind of introducing it and um, talking about photography, doing a few tips. And everybody, I believe, worked with um, smartphones. That was the invitation. You know, you can do this with just a smartphone and getting out into the world. Um, so the first, so each week there, or not each week, each session, from then on, they had an assignment. And the first assignment was looking for patterns in nature. I find that's a, a way to, that helps people get close and just having some kind of theme in the back of your mind kind of hones your eye into something as you're um, walking, walking around. So let's get started. So I'm just gonna kind of go through them. Maybe some things will pop out to talk about. Oh, I guess what I like to say these both these two were by different artists, but both had to do with tree bark and also the way that the the pattern 
uh, is kind of diagonal, you know, from one side of the, of the frame to the opposite. They had some similarities. This was a, this one's kind, I said this is an image that rewards you if you look more closely. Um, uh, because the photographer actually uh, took this into a, into a stream and this is the reflection that came back. And then she decided to uh, orient it this way, right side up or upside down, I should say, but it looks right side up because it's a reflection. So, but it takes a moment to really understand that. But if, if you look closely, you will notice it. So it's a, a reward. Uh, they were also invited to get closer, to get closer and look for details. And also um, with your smartphone, you can actually, especially when you're getting in so close, you can press on certain areas. You know, if you want a certain area uh, of the picture in focus, you can kind of press on that and that part will, will come into focus. So when you have that little tip, it allows you to play around with that, that function. Uh, I put this one in because I like the idea that it's getting really close, but we also here in the background, we have a car, uh, if, if you look closely. Um, and the idea that nature is everywhere, it's not just in um, national parks, but it's all around us, especially here in Burnaby, we're really lucky to have a lot of green space. This one looks like kind of magic to me. Hard to figure out. I think from the next picture, you'll see what it's like. I, I think this was done on the portrait mode on an iPhone, which really blurs out the background, but here it makes it, they're almost um, hovering, which I, I'd never seen anything quite like this. But these are the same berries. I also like this because it shows, you know, people, you know, we are part of nature. We're not separate entities, right? Um, we talked a lot about perspective and this image kind of offered a, a really unique perspective of looking at a fern, almost like a anti view, which um, I really appreciated. This is another one you could imagine a little ant there. But, but yeah, getting close. What, what happens when we start looking closely? But well, one thing that happens is you start noticing how things grow. So this is similar to the other picture, but it's two, uh, two photographers that were out together. And when I would see their work, I would say, wow, they work so similar. And then later I found out that they were out shooting together, which was kind of fun because they were never the same, but they were just similar. Hang on for a sec. There we go. Uh, we did talk a lot about framing, how to, you know, what's around the edges of your image and how that keeps uh, the viewer's eye within the image. So here, uh, the photographer's done a really nice job of most of the images, you know, framed by these trees and branches, but then we have this kind of openness at the top, which is really lovely. And that, and that also that stripe across kind of gets us to go back around and around the image more than once. Uh, so this, this photographer, she, I don't think was able to get out the first week or the first, you know, it was pretty quick turnaround times. Maybe they had three days to photograph and send the pictures back two, three days. And she wasn't able to get out, but she, you know, photographed the nature right in her apartment, which was really clever. So here, the growth patterns are, those are always really interesting to me. And also for math people, you know, the, the Fibonacci sequence, uh, Grant might appreciate that if he's listening. Uh, 
Yeah, this is another inside shot. Starting to notice all the details, right? And I wasn't sure what winter would offer um, in this workshop because, you know, the growing is kind of hibernating. So it's actually an interesting time to capture things in this slowed down, kind of like we're all a little bit slowed down during the winter, right? And so nature also is taking a, a break, maybe. We, it's one thing we talked about is when it snows or there's frost, how it it delineates all these edges so nicely and allows us to see things um, with more clarity. And this, uh, for this photographer, this is on her commute to work. So she started taking pictures on her way to work and her way home, which was quite interesting. So the next um, subject we brought up was light and shadow. And uh, this is one of my favorites. You know, I'd like to tell people, you know, without light, we wouldn't really have a photograph. Of course, you know, you could say we could have infrared and there are other kind, kinds of possibilities, but for the most part, you know, you need light is really the essence of photography. So uh, this is something I share a lot <laughs> and it's a way to kind of, well, just to, to, to break down the word photography, we think of photo as meaning light, it comes from Greek, and graphy as something like drawing. If we could think about photography as drawing with light, it perhaps would take on a more poetic um, feeling. These, I think we've all become so used to the mechanics of snapping pictures, but how could we slow down and think about photography in a slower, a slower way, maybe the way it was done with in dark rooms, <laughs> you know, at one time when light was really essential and chemistry. Um, and then I have a little, I like to work with visual metaphors. So we have a little visual metaphor coming up. Ooh, should be here, yeah. So this is a, a picture from Life Magazine from 1949. And it's Picasso drawing with a flashlight, drawing with some kind of light and making a Picasso looking drawing. <laughs> Go figure. But um, you know, what would that look like drawing with light? If people got to see some of Grant's work, Grant Withers work, he does a lot of work um, that really feels like that essence of drawing with light. Um, so you had someone You've got big shoes to fill. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, Grant. Um, anyway, so so let's move on to the, uh, the, the participant, participants work with light and shadow. So this is really similar to the other picture we just saw. I'll just snap up there really quick. Um, different days. And I, I think it was, this is in the morning and then this shot was on the way home. And just how, uh, when you start thinking about light, you start noticing different things. And so uh, a few of the participants actually started noticing things from behind and from the front. And so this is uh, backlit. It's partially the, the light is really coming from the back and it creates these wonderful highlights. And the, there should be a few more similar to this. Oh, that's an empty one, freebie. <laughs> Uh, this is, uh, we had one participant coming from Victoria, which was fun uh, because we got to see different types of landscapes. And I thought this was a great idea, you know, the, to combine the natural and the human built. And, uh, you know, the clouds are really lovely. And then we have this zigzag of lights that we can follow all the way down the picture. I don't want to talk about every picture, so I got to hold back. Uh, this was also um, from Victoria, as is this one. So part of um, their invitation for this um, exercise, let's say, was to pay attention to light at different times of day. You know, what does light do? How does it change during the day? 
And we did actually that week have a lot of sun, which was fortuitous. So yeah, so this is, I, I believe it's morning light. There's still the, the frost. So getting the details, getting here, we have that example. Oh, I don't think I have a, anyway, the top bit is, is um, backlit. You can see a little lights coming from underneath on the top bit, which creates all kinds of interesting um, shapes, I guess. Also this for light and shadow. You know, I believe this is at Confederation. So we've all probably walked by there, but you know, when you're looking for light and shadow, you can start seeing things with different, with a different perspective. Also, this one is that uh, backlit. So the shadow is at the bottom and then the uh, grass, I guess, is so uh, illuminated. I think we have that participant here today. <laughs> and here's from the other side. I think the same patch of grass actually. This one also has a little bit of that backlit at the top, um, well, the bottom part of the leaf, but the, the part that's going upward, facing upward, you can see a little bit of shadow underneath. But you can see people are starting to get really close. So this is where it started to get interesting, you know, abstract, like pictures became something other than straight pictures. And they, they become more than just a photograph, right? Um, I believe this was Margaret's, but I don't, I don't know if it, it, it makes sense explaining it all because I think it's lovely just the way it is. And sometimes not knowing how it's made is okay too. You know, we don't always have to um, understand how a photograph was made or even the intention. It's really about how does the photograph make you feel? This was another one that was kind of got a little bit abstract as well, but we still can recognize it. But the, the way the light was pouring through was really special. Okay. So this is a great shot for the decisive moment, you know, getting, um, getting the bird uh, open winged like that. So I know um, the photographer said she, she spent a lot of time, but she also selected a really lovely spot. So some of it is, you know, finding a good scene and then waiting for something to happen and being patient. So another great example of the framing, a frame within a frame and how that can bring together an image. Yeah, this is a, this one was one that dazzled me a bit. Uh, the movement and the sun, I guess we're all sun deprived. <laughs> so anything with sun is exciting, but yeah. This, I thought what was really special about that is the movement that's captured within this image. Uh, and this one was, I thought really fun as well. And also mixing the natural, like natural phenomena, uh, shadows in this case with um, the staircase, you know, a cement staircase, concrete staircase. I'm sure we'll all look at look at those shadows differently now that we've seen something where they intersect like that. I thought that was quite clever. It, it also becomes very much about movement, right? How does a shadow go down a stairs, a set of stairs? Here's another one, pretty similar. I mean, not similar, but similar ideas. And I love that blue. I'm blue dependent, so. 
And then this one you might recognize from Burnaby Heights. One of the murals, right? Yeah, was this one of the murals with music? No, no, okay. I looked for it actually. I went back and I was like, where's the QR code? Oh. But this is on Gilmore and Hastings. Okay, so now we're into the third and final um, assignment. And this was balance and peace. So we've started with things that were quite um, tangible, like the patterns, something specific to look for, or light and shadow. And then we started going into things that are a bit more conceptual, um, which becomes more difficult. <laughs> and it, it's more of an inquiry. And, um, you know, I, we, I think there were two or three days to to shoot the pictures. So it's more of something that people can start thinking about. And then, then you might start feeling that, you know, might find other, other places where you can capture that as well. So uh, let's see what they, what they found. So I think this is in New Westminster at Queens Park, from what I understand. So yeah, I, when I saw this, I wanted to go there. And, and you'll see if, as you guys look through them, what, if there's certain common things that people put with this idea of peace or, or balance. And this is the last one that you might recognize. Some people, yeah, it's a good one. I think this was done for balance, I think, or peace. I'm not sure, or the combination. That was part of the reason that there were two kind of topics or concepts to see are balance and peace related or, um, you know, how do you, how do you capture an idea in a photograph? And it, it's, it's not easy, but I think we have a lot of um, great pictures that came out of it. So, yeah. And, and I think um, I can put this out to you. Do you see anything that uh, unites the pictures or, or some of the pictures? I'll go back through them. So <laughs> for me, um, I don't know if people are talking in the chat, I'm not paying attention to it, but for me, um, you know, the sense of mood, you know, these places, like they really bring a sense of mood and like, oh, I'd love to, you know, I'd love to go to this place. Um, and also light, it seems that light is a big um, factor and this kind of hazy fog, which also I think, you know, is part of the creating mood but it almost like the, the godlike light. Even in this one, it, it almost feels like that light in the back of 18, 19th century paintings, you know, very dramatic. So, and this, the, you know, the kind of otherworldliness to it, even though we've all been in forests probably like this. This I believe is Burnaby Lake, so. But we still have that mist. Yeah, it seems like light and mist are the ones and the kind of flares are things that, uh, or, you know, this is just about scale and, and just a really well uh, composed picture. 
and and I guess how placid the water is was really peaceful. Yeah, water's another one that it seems that people gravitate towards water when they think about peace. And of course, I think this was taken around Confederation. So the lovely mountains that we can see so close by. And this was definitely can take in a confederation. Oh, this, no? Oh, really? Uh-oh. It's, have... it's, my, it's my Guild Park. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I kind of think of them as the same place. Yeah. This was uh, a piece that was part of the, the Stride Festival. Is it still up or it's, it's down already? It's still up. Still up. Just just seconds left. A second left, we will be rushing to take it down at midnight. No, no. There you go. So <laughs> last chance. Okay, and here's a list of uh, the, the folks that were submitting photos. We also had a bunch of people that were kind of watching, which was kind of nice too, participating in some way. Uh, and I wanted to well, I wanted to thank them for sure. Uh, all the people that participated and kept coming back. And um, thanks again to the Stride Festival, Burnaby Neighborhood House, and also the Vancouver Foundation for Community Grants that provided a, a small grant for this program. Is there anyone that wanted to say anything? Look, Sharon, you look like you might want to say something. You have to unmute Sharon. Yeah. I, uh, I was just typing that it was a great workshop and thank you very much, Rebecca. It was, it was really fun. I've never done hardly, I've really never done photography before, but it was, uh, it was a thing to. Great. To, to yeah, thanks. I'm glad, yeah. I'm glad that you could be there and, and enjoy it. Here, I'll, I will stop sharing a screen. Um, I think I wanted to just touch quickly on the fact that we were going to have um, the cyanotype uh, workshop this morning, but it was postponed to a future time, sometime in the spring, we hope, uh, just to be um, safe, because it was an in-person kind of event and we didn't want to uh, we wanted to stick close to Bonnie Henry's words and and only do essential in-person stuff. So anyway, we canceled that. But if anyone has any questions about that, I can, uh, you know, not when we're gonna have it, but we're hoping to have it maybe in May um, outside. We'll see how that works. And I guess the, um, the neighborhood house will keep us abreast about it, right? Great. Uh, can I make a comment? Yeah. Uh, I had the pleasure of joining uh, Rebecca during her last session I, I ran technical support and watch the chat window uh, for the peace and balance um, session. And I said then, and I think I've even said it in the chat window now that the, the themes that uh, Rebecca gave to her uh, students or fellow photographers uh, were, I think for, uh, as a fellow photographer myself, um, great challenges. It's, it's easy to hand out um, purely compositional and sort of technical um, challenges to, to as, as homework, um, but she intermixed uh, some really neat uh, sort of conceptual challenges in there as well to get people thinking about uh, and making their images very personal. Um, because if you ask someone to take pictures of, you know, stairs or repetitive patterns or things like that, which can be very in, uh, visually engaging, there is not a lot of uh, the, the artist's soul that's in that image. But when you ask a uh, photographer or any artist to express peace or balance, then things get really interesting. And that, I think that was expressed uh, by these photographers. So, so in, a, in a novice group, I believe it was called, um, you had some, some high level um, opportunities to, to grow and learn there. So you're, as I said before as well, you're in great hands with Rebecca and uh, you guys came up with some really neat stuff. Thanks Grant, thanks so much. I, maybe to tag onto that, the, we had the art education panel the other night. And one thing that came up was, you know, what is art and the idea that art isn't, it isn't just drawing or painting, but it's, uh, art isn't about drawing, it's about ideas. 
So kind of going into that, getting, getting people to think through photography, you know, think about peace through a medium of photography, rather than just thinking about the image itself, but thinking about feelings. And that I think that's when, um, when you can go deeper, right, and have, have deeper dialogues, because we could talk about technical stuff. And technical stuff is important to an extent, but ideas and concepts and photography as a language is really important. So I'm really glad that you guys came and it's great to show the work to everybody. And I think, um, unless there's any pressing questions, <laughs> unless there's any pressing questions, uh, we, I can hand it back to Grant and Jun Wen. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. I also gonna say that I, I was so glad that Rebecca came on board on Stride because I knew she was gonna be like a perfect fit for what we wanted to do here at Faras, like uh, showing different perfect per perspectives and showing people how art is about ideas and you know not so much about the technicality of it and. And I was just so glad that she said yes when I proposed it to her to be part of it and that she wanted to share her skills and, and did the workshop uh, because it was it was really enhanced at the festival a lot. So thank you, Rebecca. Thank you for, yeah, for doing that. So much. <laughs> here, here. Thank you. So now we are um, we're just gonna you know, do a little bit of thank yous and just kind of closing what has been to me an amazing two weeks. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I am a bit physically tired, but <laughs> emotionally I'm so, so pumped about what we were able to accomplish for these two weeks. Very, very proud, super proud of, of not only the organizing committee and the neighborhood house obviously that supported us like Subi that is amazing Simone that you know just just kind of trusts us with all of this and, and went along and Nadia that also you know uh, went around and tried to get us those venues where we kept pushing even though they were not responding and we kept pushing and said Nadia just get us six please and she kept going until she got us more than six so uh it was just uh and and then the community that as Rebecca mentioned in the beginning you know we built it and we didn't know what was going to happen but we built it and they came and everybody came and they showed up to all the workshops and to the events and everybody uh, has been also pouring a lot of great comments and encouraging words and sharing their 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 experience with us um, and how they have been able to connect with all these different uh, programs that we put together for these two weeks so I thank you thank everybody that that was in the organizing committee and participated and helped put this together and i uh, and i thank everybody that came and uh and was part of it um so i thank everybody very much and i'm gonna pass it to grant that is gonna actually mention names i think <laughs> yes yes he will um i it's really kind of hard to believe that it's over um i've said before that I hope that there's a, a an echo or ripple effect that this event creates. Uh, I don't think the the kind of the, the love and sharing and community that has been created by this event is going to end at midnight tonight. I, I sure hope it doesn't. Um, and I've seen seen connections and seen and met new people, so I know it's going to carry on for me. But I do want to take a moment to uh, name some names, uh, people who have been integral to this. Um, I guess as I'm on Spotlight, you can see the, the some our sponsors and uh, our financial sponsors and our and our community uh, partners. Uh, before, I mean, it's not. I know I won't forget because I have it written down. But it's nice and big there. The We Are Burnaby uh, team. For those of you who don't know, um, We Are Burnaby and the Stride Fe uh, Festival kind of started around the same time as a, as ideas behind the scenes and. Uh, we Are Burnaby is another uh, organization that is uh, affiliated with or it's sponsored by the North Burnaby Neighborhood House. And we've been working really closely with, with uh, 
um, Chantel and Ariel from We Are Burnaby. And um, I really encourage you guys to check them out. They, are, uh, they are, have become our home uh, online for our website, uh, partly because of the, of the stories and the connections and the resilience that, that, that is all around art. Uh, because We Are Burnaby is, is uh, an online uh, magazine, an online hub for uh, stories of resilience and stories of connections and community. And I know they are uh, eager to hear your experiences and your, your, hear about the friends you've made or the history that, that uh, art, you know, how art has affected your life. Um, but so, yeah, do, do check out We Are Burnaby. And, and they, they're looking to build stories and tell, tell the stories and share the stories. Uh, of, of Burnaby residents. Um, I'm going to mention the the names of the merchants who helped us out with our with our art displays. Uh, we have Oxmoor Market, uh, the Heights Merchants Association, Cedar Chiropractic and Physiotherapy, GNF Financial Group, Fortuna Bakery, Cafe Artigiano, Don Oso's Restaurant, McGill Public Library. Adele Ray Florist, and our, one of our favorite places in the Heights, the Burnaby Neighborhood House, uh, the North Burnaby Neighborhood House, um, at uh, the far east end of, of the Stride Zone. Uh, so those places are where you would have seen the physical art on display, our visual art, and uh, that's all coming down in the next, you know, within the next couple of hours or over the weekend. So we've had a really good run of, of seeing those. And I'm hoping you can see, well, I'll, I'll say them anyways. Our, our financial sponsors were Simon Fraser University, Explore Burnaby, Burnaby Now, and Van City. And some of those, uh, some of the support that they offered was uh, through uh, sort of in-kind donations and, and actual finances to help us uh, with the, our costs for the event. And our, our community partners, again, we are Burnaby. We have the Burnaby Board of Trade and uh, another great group, the uh, Heights Neighborhood Association. They've been all very helpful in, in making this happen. Uh, one merchant who didn't get on this, uh, on this list as, a, as an exhibition partner uh, was Reliance Insurance Group. I believe that's the, their full name. Uh, anyone who attended the NB24 video drive-in uh, would have been parked in their wonderful covered drive-in parking lot. Um, they've actually said that we, they'd be interested in doing other presentations like that in the future. So you may be invited back to, to them. And they came on board really last minute and uh, cooperated uh, with, uh, with us on, on getting that drive-in uh, uh, set up. So that was awesome. Uh, Junwen, am I missing anyone? You, you briefly mentioned... Uh, uh, some of our, our team members. So we had our art, our art uh, committee with Stride. We had uh, Jun Wen and myself as co-chairs. Uh, we worked closely with Carolyn Sullivan as well um, on the arts committee, planning uh, what kind of things we wanted to do over the months, the last few months. And in the uh, sort of more that we call the planning committee, uh, that was really N Nadia Despirito, and I believe she's here this evening as well. So big thanks to you, Nadia. And uh, Simone Brandle and Suvi, I know you're in, the, in our meeting tonight too. Again, we couldn't do it without, without uh, Suvi's very hard work. She's had her, her fingers and her, her mind and, and heart in every little corner of this event. So she's been uh, a big part of that as well. Uh, we've been advocating that she gets some time off after after stride, and I'm pretty sure Simone is, is listening. I don't know if, if Simone will be, if, if uh, Suvi will be able to actually take time off. She, I don't know if she does that. She, she, I don't think she's gonna do that. I'm sorry, but <laughs> she's, even if she gets off for the time off, I offer her many times that Suvi, don't worry, you can take the night off, and she's still joining, and she still work, so. Yeah. <laughs> she is a, 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 a power. Um, Oh, I also wanted to thank uh, the Burnaby Photographic Society for, for helping us out with, our, with, the, with the festival too. They, they played a bit of a role uh, over the two weeks as well. So it's nice to have some more community, community groups helping us out. Um, 
Okay, now, have I forgotten anybody? Well, I, I can Sharon. Just mention, sorry, Sharon. Yes, yes, thank you. Sharon, Sharon uh, Ramsey, who I believe is here tonight, uh, an NB24 filmmaker, um, a, another uh, wonderful community spirit and art, art supporter. Um, she, was, she has been part of our uh, arts committee as well and uh, gave us lots of inspiration, was part of a lot of our meetings uh, making this happen. So thanks for the reminder about that. And sorry, Sharon, I forgot to have your name on my list. Yeah, you're awesome. Uh, and there, there are a lot of faces I see in, our, in, our, in my gallery view right now, uh, members of the community who have been really supportive fans of our, of our online presentations. I see your faces every, uh, every time I show up, you're there as well. Um, Aggie, I see you're one of them right there. Um, you and I have been involved on uh, online programming in the past too, so it's nice to see you uh, still being artful uh, with us tonight. And I know Jin Wen is, has recognized and met a lot of people through uh, our presentations as well. So yes, it's a, a, a night of a thanks and a bit of a, a bit of an exhale, um, and I, I think honestly think that Burnaby. Uh, uh, Burnaby's history has changed a little bit because of Stride and uh, I'm super proud to to have played a role in that and we couldn't have done it without you guys. Um, all, all of our viewers and participants and contributors uh, to, to, uh, to the event. So well done Burnaby, well done Burnaby Heights. Yes, well done. So Simone, do you want to say something? Just something really quick. Simone is yes. here and Simone is, uh, you know, uh, I think all of you know her, but she's the programs director of North Burnaby Neighborhood House. And obviously without Simone uh, just saying yes to, to this and let's, let's do this uh, and just kind of like uh, we kept coming back and saying, oh, Simone, can you ask the city if we can hang some frames from the trees? <laughs> like, that's not an easy ask. <laughs> can you ask Reliance if we can use their, their parking lot? And can you ask if we can put, you know, QR codes here and there? <laughs> and everything we asked, Simone kept saying, okay, I'll ask. And she went and she asked, and then she'll text us, okay, they say yes. And we're like, Oh my God, like, so <laughs> awesome. So without Simone, uh, this would have been like really nothing. So Simone, please say a few words. Just really quick. Um, I just wanna congratulate everybody. This has been so successful. Um, from my perspective, um, building community through art um, is always one of the best examples I have of how people connect. Um, and so um, I asked Suvi if she could give me the total participants that just did our the art crawl or the strides uh, workshops, just the online stuff. And at this point, there's 470 people that participated in just the art stuff online. That is not including, you know, the 30 or 40 people that came to the drive-in. And what I understand, I know, right? That's just, no, but that's not even enough, Grant. When you look at the numbers that come from each of the storefronts, we have to include those. And um, I talked to Fortuna and he was saying, they were saying that um, people coming in were actually stopping at the storefront and they were looking at the paintings and the artwork that was in the this, this windows before they were going in. So, you know, I know at the neighborhood house, we don't have that kind of traffic, but I myself counted about 40 people and I'm only there a few days a week. So um, I'm estimating that probably we have over a thousand people who participated this year in this event. And so for me, that's massive in terms of connecting people to the beauty of art and connecting people to each other through their love of it. And so for me, this makes it totally successful. Um, and so I say congratulations because this event would not have happened without um, the Art Crawl Committee. Um, this, and I don't know if people know this, this is a volunteer position. Every single hour that Grant, June Wynn, um, Nadia, 
uh, Carolyn, all of the people that participated, Sharon, anybody that helped organize this, it was zero dollars. This was done from their hearts for their community. And so I, I want you to just think about that. That means that all of these events were done with hundreds of hours at zero pay. They did it because they believe in community and they love to share their love of art. And so I just want to thank you guys. Um, this couldn't have been done without you guys. So that's, that's all I have to say. Uh, Simone, I, I wanted to, and thank you. Thank you for all your support and, and trust. Um, the Jin Wen mentioned a lot of the, uh, you know, the people at the city and the different businesses uh, to whom you reached out. Um, and they all said yes, every, you know, almost every time you, you reached out to them. My, my, my note to everyone else is that Simone attracts good people, uh, you know, people like me. No, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'm happy to be included in that group of people that, you know, are surrounding Simone and, and, and doing the things that we, we believe in the things she's doing. And I think that's why she has so much trust and uh, people really believe in what she's doing in the community. Uh, the North, uh, North Burnaby Neighborhood House is a fantastic, um, fantastic place and a fantastic entity. And uh, Simone is, is, I don't think she'd ever say that she's the leader of that or she's the boss of that, but she recognizes uh, when, when connections are needed and she recognizes when people need things and when our neighborhood is needy, all those things. And she is wonderful at, um, at pulling those things together and and making making this neighborhood uh, amazing so yeah i'm i'm really happy to be at your side simone uh, doing doing what you do yes same here <laughs> thank you guys yes, for sure thank you simone Big group hug group hug i yes. was gonna say a lot of love in this a lot of love <laughs> yes a lot of love for sure and uh and one more time i i think i just want to recognize the artists that are here that participated dorothy who display art thank you dorothy and marilyn who was part of the very very successful kitchen um party celtic party who was extremely successful we got emails from all around the world saying when are you doing this again so thank you marilyn for that and please extend our thanks to dave and obviously Lee and, and rob and carrie and ron and philomena that was part of that and caroline obviously part of the committee arts committee and as well the photography uh, mindful uh, art talks uh, that she organized and she had me and grand as guests uh, yesterday and it was lovely to to be there and to be able to share some of that so thank you caroline and rebecca obviously with the photography nature photography workshops thank you so much and sharon for hosting hosting our opening and uh and just you know being there and uh you know with all your always amazing energy and creativity as well and being part of the mb24 filmmaking team awesome and bill thompson who also had display at the oxmoor market thank you bill for for that thank you so much and of course nadia for being part of the organizing committee and uh you know going around and getting us those those uh those business and um uh, so thank you very much to everyone and of course everybody else um that we we thank everybody else that was involved i think there was a question ab around whether some of the things are going to be posting on the website i don't uh we don't know at this point um the mb24 film is going to be posted on the website uh we have to check with the artist about the soundtracks of the murals and I'm not sure. I think we have to discuss a little bit about <laughs> about like uh, some of the stuff that we'll be able to share on the website. But um, but definitely uh, we learn a lot from this. Uh, we at this point, I, I mean, I think Simone is extremely committed to have it again next year. <laughs> I don't know how we hopefully with some funding that will help pay <laughs> yes. for the artist. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, if we do this again, I think we, we did a lot a ton of learning and obviously a lot of things that we could that that we are excited to 
to you know improve on and and do things better and um so we'll we'll consider all these things so thank you everyone uh for for all of that for all the great comments Bernie, oh. Bernie rocks yes we're, we're the envy of uh of our neighbors and we have a, a global presence now people people are people are watching yes for they sure. want to figure out what's what's the special sauce around here what's the secret sauce <laughs> yes so thank you everyone and i hope you uh join the streaming for the living like larry uh concert at eight o'clock as i said you go to our website uh go to events go to the calendar click on the living like larry uh you know link and that will take you to the youtube streaming and uh and you can enjoy some uh i believe uh dancing music and it's more of a celebratory kind of performance and uh we hope you enjoy it's a it's a bit of a technical magic that is going to happen everybody's going to be playing live but then it's going to get mixed together before it gets streamed to the youtube so that's going to be uh, a little uh, very interesting to watch and uh, we thank Jim Wall for being our contact there, uh, Caroline's partner, and uh, and he put the band together, and uh, and they're gonna be playing for us as our uh, closing event. So a great way to close, uh, amazing two weeks. We'll be we'll be dancing together uh, tonight, you guys. <laughs> yes. And and stay artful out there, stay creative, and uh, you haven't heard the last of us, so. Yes. And I think I, I, I hope these, these two weeks kind of like some of the energy and, and the good vibes that we were able to build kind of carry you through the rest of the year that is still, you know, challenging ahead of us. So, yeah, hopefully that's, that's what we were able to do with this. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night uh, and we'll, uh, we'll watch for you in the neighborhood. Good night. Bye. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Take Thank care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.